Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very, very, v- ah, very special 3D Buzz Math VTM. As you may remember, my name is Rob Rolnick, known on 3DBuzz.com simply as Demondo. And with me today, we've got the Otaku Radio Star. <laughs> I won't call myself Star, but yeah. Heather. Oh, you're a star. Oh, okay. Well, it's Heather from the Otaku Radio. Right. So in this lesson, as you may notice, we do not have any slides prepared. That's because it's kind of impromptu. Um... Math on the fly, math corner, whatever you want to call it. Um, What happened is, I was kind of inspired to give Heather a review of trigonometry, perhaps some teaching of trigonometry. And I figured that you guys could, you know, couldn't hurt to give it to you guys too. I know a lot of people who bought the uh, OpenGL VTMs commented that it, it would be very helpful if there were some trigonometry videos to get them up to speed quickly. So... Why not give you guys one? Okay. So the important thing to know when learning trigonometry is that... Well, there's actually a couple important things to know. First and foremost, almost every teacher who will ever teach you trigonometry completely and horribly sucks at it. (laughs) Hopefully I won't be one of them. The reason I say this is that there's a lot of confusing notation in trigonometry. Words, symbols, and so on that confuse a lot of people. In addition to that, when you start learning trigonometry, you start learning that there's many different cases. It doesn't, it's not like, you know, solving an equation where there's always one best way of doing it or one recommended way of doing it. Sometimes in trigonometry, you'll have two or three options to solve one problem. Or alternatively, you'll learn that the same uh, equation can be used in three or four different places. And you have to determine... Uh, which equation to use when, and some people get confused with this. So instead of bogging you guys down with a whole bunch of lecture preamble to the math, I figured I'll, you know, get some stuff on the screen. So some of the notation you'll see in trigonometry is sine, S-I-N, cosine, C-O-S, tangent, T-A-N, or perhaps you've uh, seen on your calculator a button that goes sine to the negative 1, or uh, also sometimes written as arc sine. Um, I try to use the latter notation, arc sine, just to avoid confusion, because some people, might, when they see this, will, see, will think of 1 over sine, which it isn't. If I confused you right now, don't worry, we're going to be covering all this in lots of depth, in lots of detail throughout this lesson, or several lessons, if that's how it turns out. But just to give you guys a bit of warm-up, to be comfortable when you see crazy things like a tangent or a cosine. Okay, so, when covering all of this material, there are many places you can start. Like I said, the same equation can be used in many places. What I find is the easiest to start with is something you've seen many times in the past. Do you know what that is, Heather? A right triangle. Exactly, a right triangle. So, some common values that you usually get when dealing with right angle triangles are 3, 4, 5. And with this, we're going to cover, only when dealing with right angle triangles, what sine, cosine, and tangent mean. So as you may know, there's an angle here. We'll call that X. We don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. There's an angle up here, Y, which we also don't know what it is. But we do happen to know that this angle right here is 90 degrees. That one I just darkened. Okay. So let's say um, you wanted to give a special name to the side with the 5 on it. Do you know what that side's called, Heather? Uh, Hypotenuse. Right, I'll call it hype, just because hypotenuse is long to write, and I spell it wrong every time. (laughs) So, that's called the hypotenuse. So, let's say you wanted to get the sine of this angle here, the x angle. Well, it's very, very simple. You take the uh, the side opposite x, so the 4, and divide it by the hypotenuse. So, sine of x 
in a right angle triangle equals the opposite side over the hypotenuse. In our example, it's four-fifths. Let's say you want to get the sine of y now. Sine of y equals. It's the same formula, opposite over hypotenuse. That doesn't change. But now your y is up here in the uh, upper part of the triangle. So what's the side that's opposite to the y? Um, opposite meaning across um, from it. Four? Well, not quite. The 4 is opposite to the X. Do you see oh, here? The oh, X is yeah, in the bottom right, and the 4 is yeah. the left side. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you want the side that's opposite to the Y, it would be the side directly across from it. So if you draw a line, you see it's the 3. So sine of Y is 3 fifths. Um, okay. But do you, do you see that? Do you see how the side opposite to X is 4, and the side opposite to Y is 3? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to uh, erase this whole area and rewrite it, because it's going to get cluttered fast otherwise. And you might see me doing that quite frequently during these lessons, erasing a uh, one area and rewriting it, just to keep things nice and clear. Okay, so we know that sine equals... Opposite over hypotenuse. So I'll just write it like that for now. Sine, the S meaning sine, O meaning opposite, and H meaning hypotenuse. So couture. Exactly. That's what we're getting. That's what we're working towards. So you already seem to know some of this. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Now we want, let's say, the cosine of an angle. So we'll start with cosine of X like we did last time. Well, cosine is the adjacent side, so the side touching it, meaning the 3, over the hypotenuse. So cosine of x equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which in this case means 3 divided by 5. What about the cosine of y, Heather? It'll be the same formula, adjacent over hypotenuse, Mm -hmm. So what would it be in this figure? Uh, 3 over 5? Uh, of y, not of x. Of y? Yeah, yeah. Of x is 3 over 5, cosine of x. What about cosine of y? I have no idea. Okay, well, how about we uh, go step by step? All what right. side is adjacent to y? Um. Like touching it. 4? Right. And what's the value of the hypotenuse? Five. Right. Yeah. So adjacent is four over hypotenuse, five, for cos of y, four-fifths. Okay. So now when we're doing cosine, we know that it is adjacent over hypotenuse. So again, I'll erase quickly. Okay, now that my erasing is done, we're going to cover tangent. Well, tangent equals, well, tangent of an angle, so I'll say x, equals opposite over adjacent, which equals tangent of x opposite, the side opposite x is 4, and the side adjacent to it is 3. So what about the tangent of y, Heather? It's opposite over adjacent, y is up here. What side is opposite to y? 5. No, that's the hypotenuse. You don't usually consider the hypotenuse in these oh problems. Oh, God, 3. Right. So 3 is opposite to y, uh, and what side's adjacent to y? Four. Right. So three quarters. <clears throat> so, so ka toa. Okay. Opposite over adjacent. 
Everybody so when does. only when dealing with right angle triangles can you use so katoa. So I'm going to erase everything quickly. I'm going to write so S O H. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Ka meaning cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And toa tangent is opposite over adjacent. So katoa. So now I'm going to give you another right angle triangle. No. Let's see here. Obviously, it's not drawn to scale. Um, 5, 12, I guess that would be 13. 144 plus 25 is 169. 13 squared is 169. Excellent. So, here's a red angle triangle. Now we have an angle here, which I'll label... I'm going to use different variables now. Okay. This is uh, a theta. Uh. And this is, I believe it's called phi. So, because these are the variables you often see when dealing with angles. The same way um, you often see x and y when dealing with real numbers. Mm. Anyway, we want sine of theta. Do you know what that is using Sokotoa? Um, yeah, it's... First you take the side opposite it. Yeah. So what's opposite to th theta? It's... Twelve. Right. Oh, smart. Twelve. And what's the hypotenuse? Thirteen. Thirteen. Excellent. Now we're going to find the cosine of, I think, uh, like I said, I think that's phi. So, what side is adjacent to Twelve. 5? Right? 12. And the hypotenuse? 13. 13. So, do you notice something between the sine of theta and the cosine of phi? They're both the same? Exactly. So, if these two here are equal... <laughs> Well, we also know something else about theta and phi. Yeah. They're complementary angles, meaning theta plus phi equals 90 degrees. Because the uh, right angle triangle has a total of 180 degrees. And this corner here is 90. Mm -hmm. So 180 minus 90 leaves us with 90, which it has to be the sum of the other two angles. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, we have 90 for complementary angles. But, um, that would imply, and like I said, I'm not, uh, not going to be proving everything I say in these lessons. So, if I say something is true and I don't really offer a solid proof, kind of take it as I'm right. But uh, that's just because when you first learn trig, you generally don't prove everything. It becomes easier to prove later on. In any case, that means sine of anything. So give me a variable. Two. Two is not a variable. Five. Five is not a variable. Those are both X. numbers. X. <laughs> sine of X equals cosine of 90 minus X. All lopsided like. Sine of X equals cosine of 90 minus x. So that's just something to keep in mind. So, um, there's one other thing I'd like to point out before we move on. So, Katoa. Okay, so sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent equals opposite. Uh, it's in P. Fear the P. 
over adjacent. But if that's true, then it equals sine divided by cos. So tan is equal to sine divided by cos. And here's an easy way of seeing it. Opposite over hypotenuse is sine. Adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. What happens when you're dividing fractions? Do you remember? Uh, no. Oh, that's all okay. When dividing fractions, you end up flipping the denominator and multiplying. Uh. So opposite over hypotenuse times you flip the denominator and multiply. Keep it trying to flip it. Hypotenuse over adjacent. Hypotenuse cancels, and you're left with opposite over adjacent. So once again, in a right angle triangle, sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of an angle is opposite over adjacent. And that's only in right angle triangles. So if you keep that in mind, all will be good, and we're going to wrap up this lesson. Thanks a lot, guys.